Hey and welcome! In today's video, we're taking a look at how the 3i G10 Plus and the iRobot Roomba 205 perform. Both robots actually come from the same ODM manufacturer, Pieka, formerly known as 3i Robotics. So I thought it made perfect sense to compare the two directly in one video. We'll start with my three test carpets, which were dirtied using certified test dust. And for the doormat, I also added a spot of sand. When it comes to cleaning performance, there weren't any big surprises here. Quite the opposite of what we'll see later on hard floors, but more on that in a bit. The maximum suction setting with carpet boost enabled if possible is used in my test. Cross pattern cleaning is used for all carpets if possible, except for the red dense carpet since it negatively affects the cleaning results. Let's start with the red carpet and its very dense pile, which is difficult to clean. In the iRobot universe, with which we also first compare the G10 Plus due to the ODM, both robots are among the worst tested, with the G10 Plus falling significantly short. The results of 10 and 24% respectively after 14 cleaning cycles are really poor. Accordingly, they aren't enough to place them in my current top 7 for this carpet, and the robots fall significantly short. When cleaning the soft blue carpet, the two robots are able to catch up a bit, achieving 30 and 39% respectively after 14 cleaning sweeps. The G10 Plus with its 39% is somewhat in the middle of the pack, but is still far from the level of a Roomba 980 or Roomba S9. Compared to the current top 7 for this carpet, the two robots don't clean this carpet particularly well either. When it comes to removing sand from the dirt mat, the G10 Plus performs pretty good, and with a 95% removal rate, it's significantly ahead of the iRobot Roomba 205 and some other iRobot devices. Overall, the G10 Plus from 3i even ranks among the top 7, although even the absolute top models achieve 100% removal. When it comes to the more difficult to remove test dust, things aren't quite as rosy for either robot. With a 44 and 46% removal rate after 7 cleaning cycles, both robots perform rather poorly in iRobot's internal comparison. And compared to the current top 7 for this test, they fall significantly short. The main reason for the rather poor results of both robots is likely the airflow design. In both robots, this is very curved and features numerous changes in direction, which negatively impacts the actual airflow and its speed. Both designs are not great and caused by the dust compacting gimmick and bin design. Differences in a direct comparison between the Roomba 205 and 3i G10 Plus are due, on the one hand, to the presumably more powerful suction motor installed in the G10 Plus, but also to the main brushes used. The Roomba 205 uses a rubber brush without a textured surface, while the G10 Plus has a combo brush. Now let's take a look at the hard floor performance one by one. Here too I used test dust, of which 0.45 grams were applied to the laminate floor, which has a slightly textured surface. The robots first clean the area at maximum suction level and with optional dirt detection, making a total of eight passes. Afterward, the surface is checked with a microfiber cloth. As we can see here, the surface is still very dusty. To illustrate this a little better, I'll show you a full surface wipe test for the G10 Plus. It looked the same on the 205, as well as on many other hybrid devices like the Dream X50, Ecovacs X9 Pro, and many others. You can find corresponding tests on my channel. A Dyson VisNav, for example, is able to clean this area without leftovers. Robots with a mopping function clean the surface twice more in mopping mode after the 8 cleaning strokes if the surface isn't clean. The appropriate water volume is selected for my laminate, which has been the medium setting for all the devices tested so far. After the two mopping strokes, I wait 10 minutes until the surface is dry. Then I test the surface again with a microfiber cloth as well as the joints. As we can see, the surface was flawless, although the joints were still very dusty. This result is also consistent with other combo robots such as the Ecovax X9 Pro Omni, Dream X50, Roborock Z70 and others. 
Now I ran the same procedure on the iRobot Roomba 205 and here I got a result that truly surprised me. The surprise, however, wasn't in the vacuum's cleaning performance, which, as expected, was just as poor as with the 3i G10 Plus and many other devices and, as we can see, left the area very dusty. The robot also used the medium water flow setting during the two mopping cycles and the smart scrub function was activated which was also used on the iRobot Roomba 505 combo. And here was the surprise. Unlike all the other combo devices including the Roomba 505 combo, the 205 was able to thoroughly clean the crevices leaving them dust free. Of course, I repeat these tests, as well as all my other tests, at least three times to validate my results. Wiping with the Y pattern always produce the same results. If you deactivate this, the wiping performance actually deteriorates, and the 205 was no longer able to properly clean the joints of the test dust. Since the Roomba 505 combo wasn't able to properly clean the crevices despite the Y pattern aka Smart Scrub, the Y pattern isn't the only reason for the Roomba 205's better performance. Weight distribution, contact pressure and the structure of the mop pad likely also play a role here. However, it's interesting to see how this simpler mopping function outperforms all the current hyped mopping functions in this test, which is also mastered by really good vacuum only robots. The Y pattern isn't a unique selling point or a groundbreaking new invention. The iRobot Brava Jet 240 already used it. Various other combo robots like the Shellbot SL60 use it. And interestingly, the current new Roomba 705 combo does too. I'm very curious to see how this robot performs in this test. Finally, it should be noted that the Roomba 205 is certainly not the best mopping robot on the market overall. It has a very simple mopping function, which suffers from the known issues, such as the entire mopping pad only getting wet slowly due to only two water outlets, and the fact that one mopping pad is only useful for one or two rooms anyway due to saturation. The dirt compression function is a gimmick on both robots, as it also compresses the dust in the area of the filter intake and makes cleaning the bin more difficult due to the design compromises. That's all, bye.